It's one of those outrage inducing headlines that the Daily Mail specializes in, but there is less and more to the story than just the headline. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott, and this is Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Gentlemen, this headline I saw on Twitter today going all over the place, but without a story attached. It was just a, you know, an image of the headline attached to various tweets, and I had to do some work to actually find the story. Here's the headline. MIT-educated anti-vaxxer doctor who treated COVID patients with ivermectin and HCQ has her license suspended and must undergo psychiatric evaluation. But here's where it gets interesting. The doctor, uh, Meryl Ness, 70, of Maine, the state has suspended her license. Uh, in some videos that she's appeared in, she appears as though she could be senile. She has been treating patients over the phone and making diagnoses over the phone. Uh, several of her patients have ended up in the hospital. Uh, one poor gentleman was stuck with both of his parents at home texting his doctor or their doctor frantically trying to figure out why they were so incapacitated while under her long distance treatment in effect. Um, and another doctor informed the main board that Dr. Nass had diagnosed uh, not only a patient with COVID over the phone, but that um, she had admitted, she had admitted herself to lying to get a prescription for at least one of her patients. And that hmm. right there, whether you are, whether or not you agree with the fact that she might have been desperate enough to get ivermectin for a patient, the fact that she lied and admitted to it, that right there is grounds for suspension of a medical license. So, Scott, uh, before we get into the other part of the story, do you think uh, the Daily Mail gins up headlines like this just to generate outrage at a time when maybe we should be stepping back a little bit? I think a lot of organizations do headlines like that just to generate mm. outrage, <laughs> I think. And, uh, I, you know, up until you read that headline from the British uh, Daily Mail, I had thought that uh, there was a British derivation to the word pithy, but apparently they have not heard that word. <laughs> Over there. That's like, I don't think, I mean, I was a journalism student. I think I would have been in trouble with the professor if I had written a lead paragraph as long as their headline. <laughs> yes. And they, they, I, the thing is, I love their headlines. It's so yes. distinctly British. <laughs> So, well, because they know you're not going to read more than the headline, that's just a truism in journalism in general. It's like, put everything in the headline that you want to get across because, you know, number one, you're trying to get them to read the story, but most people won't. And so everything they get, they get in the headline. Yeah, I I think um, I think they're overselling a story that is much more complicated. And, you know, let this be a lesson to all of the mainstream media when they try to boil things down to a headline um, that you, you've got a much more complicated situation here. It sounds to me from the bare facts that you've been able to scrounge up as a, a boy journalist um, that they um, – that there would have been other reasons completely unrelated to COVID or ivermectin or anything like that, that would have gotten this, this doctor in trouble. Um, and I think it's also a reminder that doctors are people. I mean, you know, they, you put on a white coat on somebody and you think, oh, well, you know, now there's, these are trusted authorities. And I'm not saying you shouldn't trust your doctor, but trust but verify. I'm saying ask good questions and realize their flaws. Realize that they may have a terrible situation at home that's got their mind on other things while they're supposed to be treating you. As far as the, um, the video uh, or teleconference kind of treatment, that's a new feature of our insurance plan at work. I mean, you <laughs> Like I've actually done this several times and frankly love it. Now you can't, tr you can't diagnose all conditions with this, but I have literally held my iPhone up to my gaping maw so that the doctor <laughs> could look down my throat and there's a light bulb on my phone. So I can actually shine a light down my throat and he probably gets a better high def view through that than he did through his ancient, you know, 1950s little uh, gazing device. But um, I have... Is that the official <laughs> the medical term? Gazing device? I hate to throw around this kind of uh, in jargon. Medical but... terminology? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> That's right. um, but as it turns out, uh, that was very effective for me. I was able to get an appointment, yeah. you know, in 10 minutes instead of three days for an acute situation and able to drive over to CVS and pick up the prescription without touching or talking to anybody within the hour. Um, so that can be good. But you also got to be wary of that. 
you know, be careful. You can't stick a Q-tip up somebody's nose over the phone. Exactly. I, well, I don't want to do that in person either. No. Um, Bill, here's where the story gets tricky, because from my question to Scott, it sounds like, oh, my gosh, maybe she's the worst doctor in the world. And of course, they should have revoked her license and all the rest. However, um, I don't know if this this so-called fear that she might be going senile has been ginned up or not. But the only way to to tell whether or not she's senile is one of these psych evaluations, the kind that she's being mandated to undergo. That's not what scares me, because if a doctor is losing their faculties, We need to know. That's a very important thing. But the stated reason for the psychological evaluation is because she was, and I quote, spreading misinformation. Do you think that's supposed to have a chilling effect on other doctors who might be prescribing uh, controversial drugs to treat COVID? You just, in the space of 10 seconds, completely flipped my attitude on, on this particular case. I have an extraordinarily profound fear of making mistakes uh, on factual matters. Every now and then, uh, over the course of the 12 or 13 years we've been doing this, somebody has dived in, and sometimes they've done it it just the seconds before I went on air with something that said, yes, this thing that looks so bad for the Democrats or whatever, it's actually not true. And I have a a genuine fear of this kind of thing, because in this world that we live in, if you spell a name wrong, people will discredit everything you say after that. They will just basically say he doesn't even know how to spell the guy's name. Everything, everything that follows is 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 garbage. So I make a a distinction as much as I can between things that I think are either my opinion or 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 or, uh, just general speculation versus things that I have done enough research in. To, to be convinced that there's actually something there. And some of the claims I've mas- made during last year have been pretty dramatic, and I've made those claims after a great deal of self-examination and so on. reason I bring this up is this. If it turns out that, that you hear a story that says that a doctor is being uh, essentially d- 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 unlicensed and being given a psychic va- evaluation for having prescribed medicines that are off of the, uh, the official Fauci list, then this story is a story that is terrifying and, and deserves mention. Now, as you were telling the story, it began to sound like, well, maybe the actual facts are correct, but the explanation is completely wrong. Maybe the woman is, in fact, senile. Maybe the woman is, in fact, a person who's who's not reliable and, and should have her license pulled and has really essentially nothing to do with the fact that she prescribed this medicine so much as she lied about prescriptions and she's uh, there's evidence that she's losing her, her faculties and so on, in which case the story becomes a reasonable story. And the reason I bring up the bit about being very careful about things is, Steve, is that there's so much horrible, terrifying stuff out there that's true that you don't want to start running with a terrible, awful story that's false because it dec- it's de- you don't, number one, you don't need it. And number yeah. two, it discredits everything else that you're trying to say that you can back up. So as you're telling the story, I'm thinking, well, maybe the woman's just a little bit old. Maybe she's just a, a, a champion of non vaccine treatment of, of this disease hooray and and but that but that the the so the, the seeming prosecution of her persecution of her is not related to that and then all of a sudden you wrap the story up by saying that that the reason she's being asked to get a psych exam is not because of a history of bad decisions or 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 a history of, of or just an interview where she seems to be a little absent when they come out and admit that the reason she's getting the psych review is for spreading disinformation. Now I'm back to where I was when I first heard the headline, which is that this is a case of 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 criminal persecution of a doctor who is doing something that is contrary to the official narrative and that this official narrative is in fact the most tyrannical power grab I've ever seen. Just to wrap this up, I don't know what's true in the case of this woman. I do know that there are places in in Northern Australia, camps where the unvaccinated are taken and kept, and you might say concentrated. I know that's not fiction. I didn't invent that story. That's not something I made up. So in conclusion, if it turned out that this doctor was genuinely a person who, who, who needed to be removed for legitimate reasons due to senility or whatever the case may be, 
The thing that's ultimate point here is that we're now in a world where it is no longer not only impossible to believe, but is actually, in fact, likely to hear stories about people who have been disbarred, disqualified, delicensed because they're doing something that has scientific proven scientific and medical benefit that is a that is contrary to the political maneuverings and that that is a the fact that it's a believable story, Steve, is what scares me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God, both of you guys really hit it on the on the head with this one. Uh, you know, in the uh, declining days of the Soviet Union, it had become uh, passe, if you will, to send dissidents to the labor camps, the gulag, or even just, you know, the kangaroo courts followed by summary execution because the world was watching and Khrushchev had exposed Stalin's brutality and crimes and all that. So they couldn't get away with that stuff as much anymore. And under Leonoy Brezhnev, it became standard standard practice to take dissidents and send them to insane asylums instead. Uh, oh, oh, they're, they're crazy. The party represents the good of the people, and you must be insane to oppose the good of the people in the party. And of course, these insane asylums were not nice medical facilities. They were horrible prisons, and people were kept drugged up all the time and malnourished and denied medical care and all the other things that communists are, are want to do. And as I read this story, I thought, well, at least this is just one person and not actually being confined, just having to undergo a, a psych evaluation. So we're not that far gone as the Soviet Union. And then I remember the treatment that some of the January 6 protesters are getting in yeah. their jails and got to think again, don't you? There's your right angle on that, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. A quick reminder that content like this can't exist without sponsors like you. So please, if you aren't already a member, if you haven't made a donation ever or in a while, go to BillWhittle.com. We'd love to have you on board. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. 